Yeah. All right, Joe Powers here from the Rob Ben and Joe Show, and uh, on the other side of the line here, we got our friend Ben East from the Rob Ben and Joe Show. Ben, how you doing, bud? Doing great, Joe. Uh, happy New Year. I'm ready to ring in 23 and all that comes with it, man. Just taking it easy and doing last day off for the the 23 season of work and everything else starts tomorrow. <laughs> I hear you, buddy. Right back to the grind tomorrow. Right? That's it, man. I hear you. Well, uh, Ben, thanks for joining us here in the holiday break. I know we uh, have a lot of fun together during football season and see each other on and off, but uh, we want to talk about the helmet stickers and the uh, championship belt for our uh, inaugural edition of the newsletter and the scorecard here. So I wanted to get your opinion, uh, Ben, since you're on the other side of the table there when it comes to you know, doling out the helmet stickers and actually uh, choosing the players and sending that out. So I just want to get your thoughts about what that means to you and to uh, these potential kids in schools or else. Well, it's just some uh, it's an opportunity for us to uh, to recognize players when they have big nights, big games. Um, and it's an opportunity to let the coach tell us about the player um, from his perspective um, and, you know, kind of a rundown of statistics and different things. But um, the most important thing is allowing that kid some recognition and it allows us to follow the team uh, better as well. I mean, because you see these players who consistently are performing and performing in their teams are winning. Uh, it's it's almost um, very symbiotic how that works, um, you know, yeah. between um, the good the, the, the players that are really performing well uh, and their teams turning out, but mainly um, trying to get some so, some of these kids recognition when they play really well, um, recognize the the team as well. Um, you know, when you talk about the championship belt, that reflects that's a team award. That's not just a, a, an individual. An individual can contribute, uh, but more than likely, it's going to take more than one um, you know one Jimmy or one Joe to get that. Um, to, to, to wrangle the championship belt in. So that's more of a cumulative effort. Um, but it's really exciting to see, um, you know, the response of the helmet stickers and how um, the kids really enjoyed them. And, you know, hopefully in some way, shape, or form, I doubt that's what they think about when they go on the field. But maybe it elevates play um, in some kind of way. And that's ultimately what you want is, you know, the competition to, uh, to be king. I'll tell you what, Ben, it's a lot of fun. And uh, because of our schedules, you know, I was – uh, able to go to Gatlinburg and see the Gatlinburg All-American Bowl up there, which is the private and home school uh, all-star game uh, in the um, in the southeast. It's the biggest game that there is, and it's fourth year here. And, of course, the invitations that we've had extended to the uh, Elite Eight Classic, which is the oldest all-star game in the state of Georgia, and, of course, the uh, NBC All-American Bowl out in uh, San Antonio, which we've been invited to as well. And the fun thing was when I went down on the field after the game in the uh, Gatlinburg uh, game, those guys had those helmet stickers on there. And they were like, hey, you're the guy. You're the guy with the helmet sticker. And they were just <laughs> laughing at me. Because you know, we gave out some helmet stickers there. Yeah. And it was a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, it was really cool to get to meet and talk to those players and for them to recognize what we do. And you as a player, uh, and Rob uh, also, who went on to play in collegiate ball and football, I, of course, play baseball. You know what it means to be a, a player that gets recognition and gets elevated to that next level and to be recruited. So tell me what your thoughts are around all of all of that. And how, yeah, uh, I, I think in some way, I think the ultimate goal down the line is that, uh, you know, our stickers will be reflective upon um, kids that are trying to take their game to the next level. Um, I think that's ultimately the goal at the end of the day that maybe we can be a, a stopping point for um, college coaches or something to where they can get some some quick hit and info because we're we're covering the whole entire state of Georgia and um, it's such a um, you know such a such a good game such a good uh, state for high school football um, you know it makes a really big deal so um, here we got Rob joining us um, right in the middle What's of up, our, Rob? What's up? right in the middle of my uh, right in the middle of the answer to my question there but um, uh, all in all I think the most important thing is I think we want that to reflect. Um, higher level play. So the guys that are getting helmet stickers, um, I think the end goal is to get them recognition to go to the next level. Um, and uh, because their their play is reflecting that. Um, and I think it's also a, a good opportunity for coaches um, who see our, um, our our logo and our brand on helmets to, to try to be a part of our show. We want 
my ultimate goal would be to have every single coach in the state try to contact us in a season um, from you right. know from one corner to the next. So um, that that would be the the ultimate goal at, at that point is um, you know having that helmet sticker on different helmets of um, just letting everybody know that we're trying to cover um, you know everybody. And Rob, uh, joining us here, and uh, Rob, I got to tell you, make me a little. I mean, a little motion there. <laughs> yeah, settle down. Take a, seat. Settle down on the camera, take, take a no, seat. Take a seat. Thanks for joining us. Happy New Year, brother. Happy New Year, Joe. Yeah, we were just talking about uh, the helmet stickers and, and, you know, the collegiate kind of impact that uh, Rob and uh, Ben was talking about down the road, Rob. We want, we want that to kind of turn into, you know, being at these other all-star games that we just listed through, the Gatlinburg, the – Elite Eight Classic or the Elite Classic, which is the oldest in Georgia, and then the invitation to San Antonio. It's like you never know. You know, we want people to, to look at those helmet stickers and say, hey, that's uh, that's kind of a big deal. I'm going to go talk to Robin, Ben, and Joe and find, you know, figure out why this guy kept so many helmet stickers. Um, I just want to get your thoughts, Rob, on, on what all of this has uh, uh, been about for you in this season of 2022, giving up these helmet stickers, and then, of course, to the championship belts. And, just how much fun it's been to uh, to see the camaraderie and the rivalry that kind of happens amongst the teams. The yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's been a, it was such a great year, and I think the helmet stickers too is something we talked about. You know, the last year or two, and trying to figure out what the best way to try and get some kids exposed. But I think the the biggest piece of it, like kind of we started with the whole vision, is to give these kids and these coaches a voice. And uh, between us three. And our brand, the, the way that it has grown and the way it continues to grow with coaches and stuff across the state, we wanted the helmet stickers to mean something. Um, you know, we wanted them to be not something that was taken lightly or something that you could just easily get. I mean, you had to, we're talking about the most outstanding performances in the state every night. I mean, some of the numbers, like you take a guy like Jermivy Tucker putting up, you know, 400 yards, six, seven touchdowns in a night that's the type of performance you've got to have to get one of our helmet stickers. And, you know, there's, you know, over 130 something counties in the state of Georgia, and there's a lot of high schools in each one of those counties. And we cover every square inch of the state. And I think it's been such a good thing to try and get those kids that you may not have heard about that their coaches call into our show. And if they can get a helmet sticker and somebody on Twitter that, follows me or follows Joe or follows Ben or one of the coaches, they may slide that name to a, to a coach or, you know, and he gets some film from another guy and, you know, hopefully these helmet stickers lead to players getting to the next level, whether it be the D one level, you know, the highest one you can go to your Georgia's, your Georgia techs, your, you know, Florida's, whoever, and then and Mercer and everybody else, Samford, you know, Wofford in the D one double a league and D two, wherever kids can fall, they'll find their place. But, I think we've done a good job, and we're going to continue to try and grow that brand to make it even more uh, of an important piece to try and get kids exposed so they can get to the next level. Yeah, we were talking about there just about the time you joined us, and you heard me mention again those all-star games that we were uh, invited to and have gone and taken part in some of those in this offseason. That's a big deal for us to get the recognition of that brand and then have that brand on the helmets of those players you know, making that connection is something that is uh, is on that scale. You were just talking about, Ron, Ben, that you were mentioning a second ago. And, guys, uh, I mentioned just a second ago, Ben, to you, you know, both of you were, were recruited and played football in college and played baseball. But you know, uh, to go through that recruiting process. And, you know, every little thing matters, I guess, right? Yeah, it absolutely does, Joe. I mean, I think every piece of it, when you're in high school and you're getting recruited, it's kind of a kind of one of those situations, too. You don't really know how to approach it. Ben and I were fortunate enough to go to a lot of camps, and that's how you kind of really ultimately get your name out there, and coaches can see you because they see you over several years, and kind of you build that baseline and that network of coaches. But it only takes one coach and one offer to try and get some traction going. And uh, Ben and I, we had the – we had Coach Holmes had a lot of connections at Georgia Tech with uh, a lot of the guys that he knew that were coaching up there. And so we got, you know, we had some preferred walk-ons from there. And then we played Calhoun in the third round of the playoffs and just happened to go to Bobby Lamb's camps the last six years of our lives. Um, and, you know, we had the opportunity to go play at Mercer, and that's what we ended up deciding to do. So uh, it really is all about networking and stuff like that and how you can, you know, who you know and 
one coach passes it on to the next and and that's really it, it takes off from there recruiting is all networking it's not much different than the business world today uh you just get to experience it at a lot younger age so well guys let me ask you this and then i'll let you get back to uh this rose bowl that i know it's on uh, in all of our houses here so <laughs> we see it around us uh, tell me what you think uh, as you guys being defensive and offensive players and the ones choosing these uh these helmet stickers awards each week. Uh, tell me what you're looking for, what you're thinking about when you make those choices. Let's start with you, Ben. Uh, what I'm looking for is um, the things that swing the game uh, in terms of maybe a forced turnover, a tackle for a loss, interceptions. Those are big, momentous points in a football game. They swing the uh, you know the big. They swing the momentum one way or another. So from the defensive side, I'm looking for a play like that, a sack, multiple sacks. Or if a kid comes out and has a crazy night, 12, 13 tackles, force fumbles, um, things that are really changing the game. Um, they're making a play to change the game. And uh, that's more so what I'm looking for is just the big plays um, and, and the – what that does at the end of the game. Um, and, and that's what really sticks out to me whenever I'm looking for a kid um, or, or trying to listen for him on Friday night when the guys are calling. We have to pry some of the coaches for the information that we need to get. But um, that's that's the main, uh, I guess, uh, criteria that I try to go off of when I'm selecting a um, defensive player of the week. How about you, Mr. Quarterback? What's yeah. your choice? And uh, I, I, offensively, you know, we obviously the quarterbacks and the running backs are probably the guys that we get the most stats on, uh, especially in high school. You know, some schools don't make – they may not have the receivers, catches, and yards after catch and stuff like that unless he had a crazy night, like three or four touchdowns. But we're looking for people that had, you know, incredible nights, three, four touchdowns, uh, three for 300-plus, you know, multi-touchdown type of guys, or if it's a back that has – two touchdowns on the ground, another one th through the air. And, uh, you know, people like that, and, you know, every now and then, you, you may never know, we may give it to an offensive line because Ben will kind of nudge me a little bit to make sure we try <laughs> offensive linemen some love. And, uh, and we're all about that too. But I think offensively, you know, in the state, we've, we've got such good football here in the state of Georgia, and there's so many good offensive players. And offense has changed so much over the last decade, even from when we were playing. Dublin, uh, it's so much more pass oriented, and, and there's so much more uh, aggression with tempo and stuff like that. So a lot of good players playing both ways, and uh, some guys winning on offense and defense. Um, but you do have to uh, to be one of the best in the state to to win a helmet sticker like that. And one thing too, I would like to add. I want to try and do uh, more exposure on the special teams play this season. Hopefully we can get the coaches to kind of file some back and some fans to send us some information because that's something that goes – very unnoticed in most high school games and it ends up being the you know it ends up being something that's you know big huge plays in the game punt returns kickoffs stuff like that um you know we, we block punts we want to know more about that so i think that's a piece next year we're going to try and really you know hone in a little bit more and try and get some more information on yeah well you just answered my next question there rob i knew when you guys would go there so that's awesome all right, for Rob and uh, Ben East, Joe Powers here. Guys, uh, have a happy new year. I know we're back to the grind tomorrow. Everybody will be back to work. But uh, thanks, for, thanks for giving us some time here on the scorecard. And uh, we'll talk to you again real soon. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll do it, Joe. And uh, I promise next time to not move around like a crazy person while I'm <laughs> uh, in the middle of an interview. Hey, you never know what you're going to see out of Rob, Ben, and Joe. So, hey, it's just par for the course, baby. That's it. Ben, Ben, Ben! I think the butter's in the pudding. I think so. Yeah, he didn't take he didn't take his background. Uh, he didn't take whatever was in the background. For, but gotta, in the consideration. You know, nice. hey. <laughs> it's a new year. It. It's a new year. You might as well see a lot of new Hobby things. Lobby. Half, Hobby Lobby special. Yeah, see half, <laughs> see half, see half my life, baby, in my house. There you go. There Happy you New go. Year, Joe. Yeah. Happy New Year, guys.